Okay, auntie, I let you drag me into responding to that scantily sleeved priest, and now it's my turn to pick. Okay, but I am reserving the right to veto if I find your selection to be too brain damaging. Fine, agreed. Here is the video. It's actually beneficial if you do wheatgrass uh, enemas, yeah. Enemas, yeah. Um, yeah. It's one of the protocols to get healthy if you have cancer. Veto. Veto, 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 veto. And I veto your veto. Hmm. Let's go. Am I live? We're telling your followers that you started a live video. Yes, I think I am. Stop right there. Now, I know that I should at least allow people to make their case before I gloriously rip into them, but we're hardly beyond the greeting, and already I can't help but notice the chat. This wonderful smarty has blasted out his email, not once, but twice, within the first minute of the hangout. I don't know why he did it, but please let me remind everyone who was born before the invention of the internet, or after the invention of Facebook, that it is not a good idea to share your email in public. Especially not if said email has your first and last name. The second thing I noticed is that in spite of posting his email twice, the poor guy managed to be outchatted, even though the post right beneath his is present throughout the entire video. Why am I showing you this? For no reason whatsoever. So, everybody, I am going to go live with Metaphysical Megan for sunning her butthole. Did someone just say solar freaking buttholes? Solar freaking buttholes. What are they? They're solar freaking buttholes. What do they want from me? Well, they're solar freaking butthole. Look at your face. You're the one purporting this to be real, and not even you can suppress the amusement you have at the ridiculousness of the thing you just said. Unfortunately, despite being amused by the ridiculous thing you just said, you are still encouraging people to adopt this practice in earnest, under the expectation that they will receive positive health benefits from it. On the surface, you come off as jovial and inviting, but scratch off that surface layer of joviality, and you will find some sleaze underneath. Uh, I just, there she is. Megan. Hi. Hi. How many interviews <laughs> have you done today? Um, I've done two so far today. Uh, in what countries? In Ireland and Australia. That's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. So, uh, yeah, I was just telling everybody that the, the uh, perennium sunning, uh, butthole sunning, what, is it, what do they say? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Auntie. I'm so sorry. I know you wanted to show the people that it doesn't actually take any biology knowledge to refute these people with ease, but I just, I can't help it. Listen, Dr. Wally Booth, the word is perineum and not perennium. We're talking about anatomy here, and not the status of evergreens. And perineum usually refers to a diamond-shaped area that goes from under your sunburned light bulbs all the way to the start of your equally sunburned tailbone. That area is actually very important because it is the area of a set of very important muscles. The kind of muscles you don't want to injure unless you're really, really into wearing diapers. You know what the perineum does not refer to? The skin of your butthole. And although I shouldn't be annoyed that much, this particular misuse of the word really, really pisses me off. Because there are countless women out there right now who, after childbirth, have to sift through endless forums and dodge mountains and mountains of wackery just to figure out that these muscles are a thing that can be trained or fixed for operation. And that being a mom does not mean that you're incontinent for the rest of your life. In fact, I bet that there are countless moms out there right now who don't know it yet and are too embarrassed to look around or to ask for help and therefore have to keep on living with this. And that is really, really sad. And yet instead of doing something useful and getting your definitions right, here you are contributing to the problem and willy-nilly repurposing 
repurposing a word that you don't know what it actually means just to give your weird hippie king a fancy sounding name in an attempt to make it look less of a joke. You know what you could do to make it sound less of a joke without making a fool of yourself? Stopping to chuckle like a prepubescent teenager every time you think about the word but. <sighs> Sorry, auntie. Please continue. Damn, son. You just got called out for your use of English by Eseth. There is no recovering from that. Uh, I'm sorry, Eseth. That was mean. So, um, yeah, exciting. Uh, lots of growth on your channel. Um, lots of attention. That is not especially surprising. Outrageous behavior and nude women are often used to garner attention. Uh, we call it clickbait. So congratulations to you, you have baited many clicks. I just hope that you do not use this attention as an insinuation that you have any degree of credibility. But yeah, let's talk about this. So, so, uh, sunning our under parts. Very, very important if we understand light from the perspective of it being more than just, uh, caused by fire, right? Yeah caused by f I me, I don't f fuck I don't even know where to begin with that sentence uh no don't set your battle on fire please it won't end well for you especially if you had beats because from a scientific from the science approach that's in the textbooks that we get taught in school the sunlight is just a result of burning hydrogen and maybe some other atoms which is uh, not very beneficial if you think about light from that standpoint. Okay, light in general is not a product of the chemical reactions of the sun, but what is unbeneficial about thinking that the sun is a chemical reaction that gives off light? I'm sorry if that's not romantic or awe-inspiring enough for you, but it is in fact beneficial to have precise scientific descriptions of things. But if you think about light as uh, basically the source of all things, the source of all consciousness. Okay, that's not totally wrong. All conscious life we are aware of relies on the energy from the sun in order to survive. You're just describing, as I alluded to earlier, a natural process in a more flowery, romanticized way. So at this point, you are not yet off the deep end. And and coded information. Now you're off the deep end. That our cells use to operate from, then light gets a little bit more interesting and we would want it on all, of, all parts of our body, um, inc including the parts where the sun doesn't shine. Could you please specify how exactly the sunlight is supposed to be coded information? In fact, while you're at it, could you specify also what you mean by coded information? Because when I hear information, I obviously think about RNA and DNA, and I was under the rather common impression that sunrays have neither. Okay, I'm going to ignore that you do not and cannot substantiate the utterly vapid claim that light is coded information. Instead, I want to focus on something else. A book is information. But if you put a book on your crotch, that does not mean you've read the book. Uh, just because something is or contains information, that is not sufficient justification to rub it all over yourself. You, you have yet to connect those things, uh, no matter how interesting you might find it. Um, but... What has been your favorite part about this whole thing? <laughs> yeah, um, I guess my favorite part is just teaching others that the sun isn't something that we need to demonize, that the sun is actually very vital to our just overall well-being. You want to teach others that they don't have to demonize the sun by encouraging them to expose their buttholes to it. I mean... I guess it gets attention, although I still question your strategy here. And we're taught a lot of negativity and fear 
fear-based things around, sorry, I got to let my, my dog out, um, fear-based things around our interaction with the sun. And so I'm, I like bringing this to people's awareness that the sun is something that is vital to our survival and existence. Okay, who is the lobbying force against sunlight? Is, is it big sunscreen spreading anti-sunlight propaganda? What the fuck are you talking about? I'd love to hear that for that one, by the way. The sun is bad for you. It is horrible. Stay in the house and don't go near it. As a totally by our product, which is totally useless for you unless you do exactly the opposite of what we just told you that you should do. Plenty of things that people widely regard as vital can be bad for you in large enough quantities, or if you engage in, with them in ways that you are not supposed to. For instance, you're not going to find any negativity around water. You can drown in water, though. Just like you're not going to find widespread negativity against the sun, despite the fact that the sun can burn you. Like, these things are not wholly good or wholly bad. But in general... Yeah, I think sunlight has a pretty positive connotation to it. Yeah, so uh, Ben, there's some people that might not know exactly what we're talking about. So what we're actually talking about is uh, Megan. Well, I posted a video. I've been talking about it. Megan's been suntanning naked for a while. We all have been suntanning naked for a while. That is not the reason why it got attention. Sun tanning naked is nothing new. Nor do people necessarily advocate against it. Unless it's done in a place where it's either way too cold, way too warm, or the local culture disintegrates you for trying it. No, that was really not why you got the attention. That is why you got the attention. Um, however, in the last few days, Megan especially has been going viral. I mean, predictably, the nudist hippie chick was going to have a few viruses, right? All over the world. By viral, I mean, uh, how many millions of people have, have seen your account? Oh, that kind of viral. Well, thank you for clarifying. I wouldn't have understood. Yeah, I think I've had almost 6 million impressions on my account. And I've had, I think, around 360,000 people come. I bet you have to my page right so this all happened uh within the last three days because lots of news stories have been going around of megan holding her ankles with, <laughs> uh her uh under parts exposed to the sun um and we are all promoting this as a a, a solution to health you know, the things you say make a lot more sense within the context of you thinking health is a problem that you need to find solutions for. Solving health by getting a battle sunburn. Well, I... It, it does reduce your health, I guess. And uh, more optimal living using the human technology of capturing sunlight. Make more use of the human sunlight technology. Not by trying to sit, stand, or lie in a manner that the biggest possible amount of your body is exposed to the highest amount of sun. No, no, no. By twisting yourself into a glorified pretzel to ensure that one arbitrary, hyper-minute part of your body is the one that gets the sun. So, have you, are you getting hate? Yeah, I'm getting mail? a lot of hate. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it, you know what? Kind of like Troy said a few days ago, that for me, this is a sign that I am in alignment and that I'm on mission if I'm getting a little bit of negative pushback. So, yeah, I see it as a good thing. Okay, and is receiving positive feedback a good thing? Well, do you see if that's the case, then both positive and negative feedback are good things. At that point, you can basically toss out the concept of feedback because whatever you get as a response, you're going to interpret as you being on the right path and doing what you're supposed to be doing. 
Yeah, and and the unfortunate part about this whole thing is that it's winter time, right? Because yeah. everyone's a little bit uh, more able to dismiss this because they don't want to go outside naked right now uh, when it's cold out. Ah, uh, yes, because both butthole sunning and butthole frosting are important parts to maintaining balanced health. Oh God, butthole frosting. That is, that is an unfortunate combination of words. So what do you tell these people when they ask? Because I'm not even really a a answering a lot of the questions that I'm getting, but what are you telling people when they say, they, they just ask like, what are the benefits of this? Or what kind of questions are they asking you? Yeah, so they definitely ask me the benefits. They ask me when I started this, um, where I heard about it. And yeah, those are probably the top questions. And I just tell them the benefits that I've personally experienced. And since I've been doing this for a few months now, um, the biggest thing I would say is just um, better energy throughout the day. I used to take a lot of naps. So I talk about how my sleep cycles are shorter and I just wake up ready to go during the day and just have this vigor and vitality for life um, that I didn't quite experience before doing this, so. Wait, 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 wait. You just said that you used to take a lot of naps, then noticed that the sleep cycles got shorter. Did they get short as you started taking naps? Or did you take many naps before that, and now they just started getting shorter and shorter? And if it is the latter, do you count butthole singing sessions to the naps, or are they extra? Could you please be more specific about it? I noticed that energy in my body transferring over to various aspects of my life. Okay, I'm going to try to cut down on the glibness, and assuming your account of the situation is accurate, give maybe a plausible explanation as to why the change in attitude might have occurred. You weren't getting millions of impressions and hundreds of thousands of views prior to this lifestyle change. It was only after the lifestyle change and you expressing on social media that you had undergone it that you suddenly got this inflow of attention. That might explain the improvement of your mood. You see, that's the problem with uncontrolled variables within an experiment, is now you can't isolate the variable causing the effect that you observe. Nice. So the way that I like to explain it is that uh, melanin is all over our body. And melanin is produced when our skin is exposed to the sun. Yes, in fact. Well, you've made a scientific claim that I do not have any serious objections to. It, I, I honestly didn't expect that one. Congratulations. And we all have heard of people bleaching their buttholes and what they're doing is they're actually trying to reduce the pigment in the anus because actually in the anus there's a lot of melanin i'm i'm sorry everyone this is my fault i i shouldn't have encouraged him by commenting on the agreeableness of his very mundane claim because that has emboldened him to say even more outlandish claims Let's start from the premise we agree with and expand outward from there. When exposed to sunlight, skin will initiate the process that produces melanin. Why then would the skin in and around the anus be especially good at doing so? It has a comparatively small surface area and is typically obscured by those very clappable cheeks. Consider a plant for a moment, something I would expect you to be enthusiastic about doing. How does it absorb sunlight? Well, it has leaves that come in various shapes and sizes and whatnot, but they're all designed to maximize the surface area that take in sunlight. Surface level of anus aside, it is indeed true that the skin around your butthole is generally speaking darker, in spite of not being exposed to the sun, mind you. But sunning did not contribute to the darkening of said area, and therefore bleaching it doesn't remove any sun benefits from said area, either. But that aside, you somehow managed to prove your point by saying the exact opposite. Again, you see, melanin 
usually does not act like an enhancer, but as a filter. The more sun you get exposed to, the darker your skin gets in order to filter out the excessive amount of sunlight. Which means that, for example, people with very dark skin pigmentation require a lot more sunlight for the skin to produce the same amount of vitamin D as your average Count Dracula would, with far, far less. And it's also the reason why they're much more prone to vitamin D deficiency in sun-deprived countries, while at the same time their counterparts are much, much more prone to getting sunburns. So with all of that in mind, why exactly would butt sunning be more efficient? Why would it be more efficient to expose the one darker spot of your body as opposed to everything else? Or for that matter, why would that area be less efficient if, for example, you had the pigment bleached out? Its structure does not maximize surface area, and its pigmentation does not help with light absorption. Nothing about the anus seems to imply that it evolved for the purpose you're saying it did. Maybe I'm giving you too much credit, even, by implying you would accept evolution, so let me rephrase the question. Why would the infinite cosmic consciousness of the universe design us in such an unintuitive way? You would not make a plant healthier by turning it upside down and exposing its roots to the sun. Why do you think the analogous behavior would make humans healthier? And melanin's job is to capture light. Melanin's job is to filter and convert light. It doesn't bring light anywhere. And bring it in through the, uh, the, the, the nervous system through the brain, through the pineal gland, essentially. The nervous system doesn't transport light either. And so the skin is an extension of our nervous system. It captures the light, brings it in. The skin is an organ that happens to have nerves and nerve endings in it. It itself is not part of the nerve system. Through the pineal gland and then it gets transferred into melatonin. Light does not get turned into the hormone melatonin either. Through a, a series of <clears throat> complicated Scenarios! Light doesn't get turned any more into melatonin in your brain for complicated scenarios than it does for simple ones. Which means not at all. And then when we go to sleep, that all, the pineal gland opens up to the cosmos and we transmit that light into the uh, vibrational codes that all of our cells resonate at. <sighs> I, I don't, I... There's nothing I can say to this! It's too far out there! It's way too far out there! And basically every night we're, we're, harmoni we're re-harmonizing those vibrations according to the light that we're exposed to in the day. And then in, uh, th this is explained in many different ways in many different cultures, right? In Qigong, that area of the body is a very important gate that we receive life force from. So it makes sense to, to shine it to the light to receive all that life force um, energy. And then all we need to really do is look at the plant world to see that they convert light into life as do we. Yeah, that's not wholly untrue. Light is either directly or indirectly beneficial to human health. But I think you are skipping over some very important differences between your human-plant analogy. Your ass is not a leaf. Even, like, a, a very high-level layman understanding of what leaves are and how they take in sunlight would convince you that, n no, your anus is not designed to take in light. Um, and so we can either eat the plants or get out into the sunlight or do both. Wait, either? Or do you intend to imply that you could exist solely on sunlight? That you don't need to eat or do both? You could, in fact, just absorb sunlight. Uh, is that, is that correct? Yeah, that's, that's definitely correct. <clears throat> oh, well, if Megan says it's correct, then case closed. No more discussion necessary. Yeah, so, um... Speaking of eating plants, speaking of eating plants, how are you eating right now? Yeah, so um, I actually don't eat a whole lot of food anymore because I fuel my body with 
superfoods that are rich in chlorophyll. So I probably eat one solid meal a day, but I do eat a lot of raw food and um, fruits and vegetables. So, but I would say I rely primarily on this nutrition from these superfoods I've been taking for a little while now. Yeah, I only eat once a day too. I don't know if you got that from us, but uh, definitely we are uh, consuming the same products, the Purium products. But um, so for me, I'm I'm literally having Power Shake, which is a green uh, raw nutrition shake every morning and pretty much two or three more times during the day along with a bunch of herbs. Uh, and then... Uh, and then I eat once, maybe in the evening, maybe twice if I add a lunch. Uh, if I work out, I add, I add more, but... Boy, the story did shift quite quickly from, yeah, I eat once a day, to, yeah, I eat two to three times a day and supplement that with three or so shakes. Call me uncharitably incredulous if you'd like, but I'm not convinced that you need or take in less food than most other people. Well, let's forget for a moment eating the same amount. How on earth does he manage to eat so much <clears throat> nutritious food and still look like a skeleton with a skin suit? And also, why exactly have we suddenly shifted from butts in suns to glorified hipster energy drinks? We've got actually a link to all of those superfoods on uh, Megan's link in our link tree, right? And go yeah. to the Holistic Justice League because we are both members of the Holistic Justice League and uh, promoting superfoods to the world because the plants have chlorophyll in them and that helps them convert sunlight into energy. Chlorophyll is actually one molecule different than uh, hemoglobin. Is that correct? Hemoglobin, yeah. Yeah, globin. I yeah. knew it didn't sound right. <laughs> Right. I don't know what you mean by that. I don't believe that you know what you mean by that. So I'm going to do my best to try to guess what you meant. This is the chemical composition of chlorophyll, and this is the chemical composition of heme, the color furnishing pigment present within hemoglobin. So in the center of chlorophyll, there's sodium. In the center of hemoglobin, there is an iron uh, no, within chlorophyll there is magnesium. There's also very drastically different amounts of hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. Yeah, in terms of the elements present, there is a difference of one between these two compounds. But that is not the only difference, and that is not a trivial difference. Seemingly small differences between the makeups of different chemical compounds can result in very non-trivial differences in their actual Attributes. For instance, this is hydrogen, which is explosive. This is water, which is one atom different, but is typically less explosive. Element or molecule? I don't know, I'm not a scientist. No, you're not. But neither am I. Which is why I've tried my best to abstain from just googling what scientists say about the level of melanin present within the anus, or the relationship between melanin, melatonin, and the pineal gland. I'm averse to doing so because if I don't have the relevant expertise to comment on a particular subject, I'm also probably not qualified to identify experts in that field. Laymen often rely on experts, or at least the people who have been identified as experts, out of practical necessity. For many of us, this is a frustrating and unsatisfying position to find ourselves in, and you are preying on that dissatisfaction. You don't describe the mechanics behind any of the processes you've claimed to happen, and you don't define terms like life force and vibrational conscious energy in ways that are precise, measurable, or even consistent. You just toss out your hooks into the ether, trying to latch on to people's uncertainty and doubt. And despite shrugging off the validity of textbooks or the expertise of scientists, you are still happy to use both of these things to the extent that they support the conclusions you want. 
or at least can't be twisted to support the conclusions you want, like the shocking similarity between hemoglobin and chlorophyll. While you might come off as the lovably credulous smooth brain hippie type, you actually throw up enough red flags that I suspect you of dishonesty. Yeah, you're doing a great job, though, explaining these scientific things. No, he, he can't, though. He hasn't explained anything. He's just made statements. It is not the same as explaining anything. Can you explain it better? Um, I don't know if I can, actually. Okay, but, um, so if yeah. the more chlorophyll that you eat, the more your body is able to uh, assimilate light similarly to the job of chlorophyll. And so the body needs these elements inside of us to do this transfer. So if you are really sensitive to the sun, odds are if you eat more plants in a high uh, quality, then the more you'll be able to transmute the energy of light into life force. Mm-hmm. If you eat chlorophyll, you become a plant. Gotcha. Seriously though, this sounds a tiny bit like a snake oil salesman pitch to me. Drink chlorophyll and expose your butt to the sun, and you too can get the amazing Cosmos Wave Chi Energy. And if you buy the drinks now, you get 50 Chi Energy rice for free. And uh, my buddy David uh, Sandoval, who invented all of these products, once again, you can see them on Megan's bio link and use her code Metaphysical Megan for a hefty discount. What exactly are you trying to sell me? So you, you have thus far been singing the merits of sunlight and raw foods. What is the product exactly? Is it a funnel to better concentrate the light as it shoots up my ass? Uh, he invented these products. He was working at the Hippocrates Institute with... Uh, is it Hippocrates? Yeah, with Ann Wigmore back when she was curing cancer... The fuck did you just say? When she was curing cancer, when she was curing cancer, all these different types of cancer, she was using wheatgrass. She was using wheatgrass. So this is the mother of wheatgrass. Dave Sandoval was there and she basically gave all of her information to him and he carried it out through this company. And the big takeaway he got from working at the Hippocrates Institute is that these cancer patients come in, they get healthy, because they're juicing many, many times a day, and then they go home, and then they get sick again. Because in order to juice vegetables, it takes a lot. You need to buy the stuff, you need to take it home, you need to put it in the fridge, you need to use it before it goes bad, you need to juice it, you need to clean the juicer, not to mention buy a juicer. All of this stuff just takes a lot of time, especially for someone who's not feeling healthy. Cancer is a very expensive disease. It's chemo and surgeries and doctors and hospital rooms, sometimes drawn out for months, if not years, of treatment. It is not cheap to have and handle cancer. And do you mean to tell me that people who found an effective way of treating their own cancer could not maintain the treatment because it was too difficult or expensive for them to maintain access to fresh produce and a juicer? In retrospect, I can't believe I was so hesitant to call you a snake. You are not just preying on people's doubts and uncertainty. You are actively looking for people in desperate situations, facing down hopelessness, and looking to take advantage of them. And to just have it in a powdered form, put it in the shaker bottle, drink it, very, very easy to do. The fact that you guys spread utter science woo to sell powdered herbsy stuff that probably easily outgrows the price of veggies and their blenders within the first purchase is bad enough. But the fact that the person who came up with it is buddy buddy with a woman who sold desperate people bogus cancer treatment makes it so, so much worse. I have a fuse about to burst right now. But before it does, please tell me one thing. Did you come up with the idea to use the picture as a gateway to get people's wallets after the picture went viral or before? The, uh, I'm just looking at the questions. I'm looking at Marty basically <laughs> commenting every other comment saying, I just got dumber. 
And he's yeah. asking about shoving wheatgrass into his <laughs> butthole, which definitely is something that uh, Marty would like to do. And it's actually beneficial if you do wheatgrass uh, enemas, yeah. Enemas, yeah. Um, yeah. It's one of the protocols to get healthy if you have cancer. You are actively telling people who are dying of cancer to shove grass up their ass. In, in response to a jab made by someone in chat. I'm going to be sick. Yeah. Um, but Kamut wheatgrass was found in the Egyptian tombs. Sandoval helped get that over here. He also was the first person to import coconut oil and chia seeds. So this company, uh, which I love, it's actually changed my life. It's a network marketing company, which means that we all make money spreading the knowledge, spreading the mission. And uh, it's how it should be, right? Oh my God, it's a pyramid scheme. Of course it's a fucking pyramid scheme. Why else would these people be plastering on these fake smiles, peddling this abject nonsense? It's a fucking pyramid scheme. We can right. give our money to the corporations, or we can give our money to the people that help us change our lives. Yeah, fuck the corporations, man. Now, if you wouldn't mind financially endangering yourself in order to get recurring boxes of protein bars and jeopardizing all of your personal relationships by trying to peddle those protein bars off to all of your friends and family, we can really stick it to them. All right, Megan. Yes, I'm familiar with Edgar Casey and am very connected with his work. So Someone's somebody asked about that. Edgar Casey. Yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you guys know that Edgar Casey has re reincarnated into this reality in this I timeline? I would point out that it is reincarnated, but in the context of this video, I'm not even sure that that would be accurate. Maybe he was carnated. Maybe he was originally meat. And then he drank so many veggie cosmos drinks that he became a plant. And then he re Carnated again and is being normal. Back. Back to normal. Yes. His name is David yeah. Wilcock. B reincarnation? Dare I ask how you could possibly confirm that? It was reincarnation after all. So, y'all familiar with Edgar Casey's care? So, I've been to uh, Edgar Casey's Institute in. Virginia. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Where his hospital was. Yeah, circulate, assimilate, rest, expel. So, all of this is, this is my entire life's work. No, no, no. Don't move on to your life's work, you attention-deficient goldfish. You said someone reincarnated. Let's focus on that one for at least a minute. Yeah? How could you possibly know someone reincarnated? And uh, being able to assimilate and nutrify the, the cells comes down to what we're eating and then how we are taking in nature. Because yeah. really, we've got uh, earthing, light, the amount of air we're breathing and the quality of air we're breathing, and the type of water, because water makes up most of our body, and then ether. What is ether? Now, d don't give me some bullshit like it's the stuff the soul is made of. No. What is ether? How do you know? And how can you measure it? You were firmly rooted. Not firmly rooted. You were partially rooted within reality towards the beginning of this live stream. You're talking about melanin and sodium and, like, shit that's real. And now you just dove right into ether. <laughs> Do you just weed out to the people who would disbelieve your claims the longer the live stream goes on? Is there anyone with two brain cells to rub together wouldn't get to the 20 minute mark of this live stream? Is that what you were banking on? It's it's just me and Eseth that made it this far. Oh my god. There. So these five elements are actually what's the most important thing to be intaking. Really? The most important stuff you're intaking? Let us go through that list of yours one more time. And so even if we're intaking the proper food, we still need to be making sure that we're in the light. You're taking light through your battle, as we have already established. That we're on the earth barefoot. You take in the dirt that you walk on. 
how you take it in, let's maybe not discuss. That we're drinking structured water, preferably yeah. from springs. Structured water, meaning magnetized water. First of all, I doubt it is that common that you will find any kind of magnetized water in natural wells all that easily. Secondly, just because it is magnetized doesn't necessarily mean that it is clean. And thirdly, I highly doubt that even if the water is magnetized in the glass before you drink it, it will be all that magnetized when it arrives in your bloodstream. Air, we can be doing all sorts of things with breath and air. No objections to those two. And then also connecting to the cosmos, um, meditating, you know, harmonizing. Yeah. That is your list. Earthing, light, air, and space wool. So someone is asking for starter on products, what should be the first one I purchase? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sure that is a genuine question you received from a real not plant member of chat. <laughs> You're in the middle of talking about ether and the spirit and all this other totally wacky nonsensical bullshit. And someone in chat innocently goes, well, how could I buy your product and where should I begin giving you money? No, go fuck your... Megan, I don't say this often, but I hope you get sunburn on your clit. What's most important is for you to get all the glyphosate out of your system. So we actually have the only product certified to remove glyphosate. Yeah. If you have glyphosate poisoning, contact us because we're a lawyer and we're going to help you sue them. So I know glyphosate's in the media. I know all of you guys know what glyphosate is. And I know... <laughs> just, oh, oh, just the brazenness of this asshole. He's like, yeah, this topic is really big in the media right now. Here are the pills to save you. It's just, you are, you are just the stereotypical snake oil salesman. Uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, I've got a whole video on Monsanto and glyphosate, but these products, so if you want... Uh, I am absolutely fascinated by the blatant hypocrisy where on one side you complain about the shadiness of Monsanto, while on the other you're openly suggesting to stuff highly questionable substances up your butt to cure cancer. This is depressing. This is seriously depressing. Sorry, Auntie. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it sure was painful. Maybe next time you'll respect the damn veto system. Oh, shush you. If I would let you veto every whack-chop fruitcake that I present to you, then you would go back to being super lazy and only make at best two videos a year. I am not lazy. I'm just conservative with my creative energy. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go play video games for another five months. See you next year, everybody. Sayonara, Megan. Bye. Peace.